The following program is an exclusive presentation of Prime Sports. The Washington Huskies have reached the College Softball World Series the last three seasons. Two years ago, they finished third at regionals. Last year, it was a second place finish. Can the Huskies take the final step to make it to the Elite Eight in 1996? They begin the quest on their home field, next on Prime Sports. Husky Softball Stadium on the campus of the University of Washington in Seattle. Prime Sports brings you first round regional action in the NCAA College World Series as Jacksonville State of Alabama champions of the Trans-America Athletic Conference meet the Pac-10 champion and number one nationally ranked Washington Huskies. Hi everybody, I'm Todd Pickett. Welcome to Seattle and our live coverage of this regional action as Jacksonville State faces Washington in the first round of a double elimination tournament. Here's our format in today's opening play. Third seeded Indiana faces number two Oklahoma State and number four seeded Jacksonville State in its first year of Division I softball faces the host Washington Huskies. Peg Reese alongside once again, and Peg, this Jacksonville State program, as we said, made the move up from Division II, where they were a perennial national contender, to D1, and barely skipped a beat there in the national tournament their first year. And the amazing thing was they were picked to finish last in their conference, what they, what they ended up doing, winning the TAC conference, and they finished eighth in NC2As in wins and losses. Jacksonville State's Lady Gamecocks won a play-in to get into the tournament. You see their overall record very favorable, a good hitting team and very low pitching, and three outstanding stars to talk about, Wendy McKibben, Rachel Stone, and Ann Schultz. Three of the top players, not only in the field, but at bat, uh, at least five of the players for Jacksonville State hit better than 300, so they really can't get the bats firing. McKibben and Shelton amongst a group of junior college players. In fact, they were junior college teammates before coming to Jacksonville State. And not only can Ann Shelton hit the ball very well, she is an outstanding pitcher. We'll tell you more about her in just a second. Meanwhile, the Washington Huskies clinched their first ever Pac-10 championship and squeaked it out by a half game over Arizona as they uh, lost to UCLA here on Prime Sports last Sunday, but uh, won the Pac-10 championship, ranked first in the country, and again, the 3-4-5 part of the lineup for Washington, very formidable. And this has been a very season and I'm they, you know they're just looking for a happy ending to it that would be a trip to the College World Series take a look at these three gals Pickering Church and Klein who just hit 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 and they play great defense too these are three gals to keep an eye on and we mentioned uh, the pitching two outstanding pitchers today and Shelton getting the start she'll hit in the cleanup spot as well for Jacksonville State and a little bit of a surprise start perhaps for Washington well, first of all, Shelton for Jacksonville State. She's got great statistics. 0.62 ERA, that's wonderful. Lots of wins, few saves. Look at that, 330 strikeouts. I think it's going to be fascinating to see if she can keep that up facing the number one team in the country. Then you got to take a look at Eve Goff. A surprise start, as you said, hasn't thrown that many games. She's got the best percentage in win-loss, however, for the Huskies. And, and maybe uh, Coach Wilson is just uh, throwing a wrinkle into the works and seeing what her team to come up with. I think Ann Shelton's going to be a real key. As uh, we said, 330 strikeouts. She hiked her totals from a season ago in 18 shutouts. It's going to be interesting to see what she does against the nation's number one ranked team. Stay tuned. We'll bring you the starting lineups and get things set for this first round regional from Seattle. Jacksonville State taking on Washington. It's coming up next on Prime Sports. This is Prime Sports. We play the Northwest. And welcome back to Seattle as you see the Husky Softball Stadium in the foot of the football complex. Those are the North Bleachers of the football complex here at the University of Washington. And while we've got a quick second before our game starts today, we want to welcome all the folks on Time Warner Cable in the Anniston, Alabama area, fans of Jacksonville State watching our game today. Been an interesting afternoon of weather. You saw some of the clouds over Lake Washington when we got here in mid-afternoon during the first game. It was sunny and looked nice. And as we look out over the center field fence, there are blue skies once again, but there have been very strong winds for about the last hour or so, and most of them blowing in. 
to the stadium. So we'll uh, have to see how that goes. There's a look at Jana McGinnis, the head coach of Jacksonville State. First year as the Division I program in the lineup for the Lady Gamecocks. Rhonda Freeman will lead off and play center field. Rachel Stone bats second and left. Wendy McKibben, the catcher, is the number three hitter. Pitcher Ann Shelton, her battery mate, will hit cleanup. Stephanie Vickers is the right fielder. Annie Simpson at short. Rachel Riddell at third base. Jennifer Russo, the first baseman, and Jennifer Jolly is the designated player. Terry Moore will play second base, but will not bat for the Lady Gamecocks. The defensive alignment for the University of Washington. Mindy Williams is in left. Shelly Brown in center. Freshman Becky Newbury in right. Michelle Church at first. Sarah Pickering at second. Tammy Storseth at short. And Heather Tarr, the third baseman. Jennifer Klein, the catcher. And Eve Gaw will be the starting pitcher for Washington today as we take a look at some of her numbers. Eve Gaw, the starting pitcher for the Huskies. Finds herself in uh, the top 10 in so many statistics for the Pac-10. She gives up only five, a little better than five hits per game. She's fifth in the Pac-10 in wins over the season with 17. She has only two losses and seven of her wins are shutouts. This gal's just a sophomore. Her Our umpires for this game, Mike McDermott behind the plate, Lori Bish is at first, Benji Hedgecock, the third base umpire. We've talked a little bit, Peg, about Jacksonville State being in its first year as a Division I program. For fans who haven't seen Washington before, this program is in only its fourth year of existence. And in year number four, there's the head coach, Teresa Wilson, who's taken three different schools now to the NCAA tournaments, Pac-10 Coach of the Year. But here they are hosting a regional and the number one team in the country. Well, I would bet against the possibility of being able to get to the number one spot in the nation in just four short years. Teresa Wilson has done it, though, and her record as a head coach has gotten better in each position she's had. She started at Oregon, then she went to Minnesota. Now she's at Washington. She just keeps getting better and better. She's done a phenomenal job here with the Huskies. First pitch of the game, a swinging strike by Rhonda Freeman. Todd, both these teams come from an area where a uh, slow pitch had been the standard in high school ball, uh, although Washington changed to fast pitch uh, about three or four years ago. And uh, their incoming freshmen who are from the state uh, have been playing fast pitch in their high school careers, uh, but a number of the young women from Jacksonville State are playing fast pitch for their second, maybe third year. Alabama area still playing a lot of slow pitch high school softball in foul territory. Long run for Sarah Pickering to make the catch. Long run, you said it. Sarah Pickering was splitting the difference between uh, Newbury and Church as they headed towards a foul area. Pickering come up with coming up with a nice grab. Here you see the delivery of God. That ball was a little high in the strike zone. And uh, these three are going to converge, and Pickering with the right away picks it up. Outstanding defensive player Pickering, and an all-conference selection once again for Washington. Rachel Stone steps in, one of the junior college players who was a junior college All-American as a sophomore. One of the gals who's in her second year of playing fast pitch, but she's batting 394, so she has adjusted. One hopper grabbed nicely by Heather Tarr, and there's two gone. That ball took a nice bounce, uh, well within the reach of Heather. She got it a little bit over her head, set herself, and fired over to Church at first. Good play with the Huskies. Nice pitch just on the inside corner. Stone gets a good handle on it, but she, unfortunately she hit it right to an infielder. And our first look now at the leading hitter for Jacksonville State, Wendy McKibben, who set several school records a year ago and came very close to equaling her outstanding batting average of a season ago this year. Well, McKibben leads Jacksonville State in five offensive categories, so keep an eye on her bat, though, as Eve Gaw toys with her just a bit. That 450 batting average that you saw is second on the single season list to her own 462 of a year ago, which is a school record. McKibben tough, tough to strike out. Last year, she only struck out four times. Uh, excuse me, this year it's four times. Last year, three. So in two years, seven stri strikeouts uh, for McKibben. You, you can see what the wind's doing to our center field camera. That gives you a little indication of how windy an afternoon it is here in Seattle as uh, 
Our crew trying to hold its own out there. Out in the center field bleachers with a strong swirling wind that now has changed direction completely. You see it going right field to left across the outfield fence. We got somebody holding the camera still. I'm wondering who's holding the camera. <laughs> he's, he's roped, he's he's roped down. <laughs> Crowd wanted a strike called on that one, did not get it. You see Gaw's reaction as well as we go to a full count. We're talking about what a what a hitter uh, Wendy McKibben is, a catcher for Jacksonville State. Uh, she was number one in the conference with her batting average. Full count pitch. McKibben strikes out. Jacksonville State goes down one, two, three in the top half of the first inning. We'll go to the bottom of the first in this regional game. Jacksonville State nothing. Washington coming to bat. Welcome back to Seattle as we get set for the bottom of the first inning. We'll take a look now at the batting order for the Washington Huskies. Shelly Brown a leadoff in center field. Tammy Storseth at short. Sarah Pickering at second. Jennifer Klein, the catcher. Michelle Church at first. Becky Newbury in right. Janine Giordano is the designated player. Mindy Williams in left. And Heather Tarr is at third base. Defensively for Jacksonville State, Rachel Stone in left, Rhonda Freeman center, Stephanie Vickers in right, Jennifer Russo at first, Terry Moore at second, Annie Simpson at short, Rachel Riddell at third, Wendy McKibben the catcher, and Ann Shelton's first pitch to Shelley Brown. Just about ready here. And take a look, there's her batting average, but her pitching numbers are just amazing, Peg. 330 strikeouts in 215 innings of work. And she has been a workhorse for this team, for throwing uh, the lion's share of the games uh, through the season. A senior uh, transfer from uh, uh, junior college down south, and uh, she brought her catcher with her. 1-1 one, one pitch to Brown, a slap hitter who gets hit by that pitch and will be aboard. Well, if, uh, if Shelly Brown's feeling that, she's not giving any indication because she got hit and just dropped her bat and took on down first base pass. We'll take a look at it as this ball tails inside and gets her on the elbows and she'll just drop it and go. We'll see how Shelton reacts to that. Tammy Storseth, uh, Storseth rather, another slap hitter running on the first pitch is Brown. Throw way wide and she's in cleanly. So we're going to see Washington's strategy right off the bat. Well and now Shelly Brown is 15 for 15 on the bases and steals and uh, she Boy, she just took off. I don't, they weren't waiting for a thing. I think they need to test this catcher's arm. They did it right out of the box. What we were going to say about Storseth, she also is a slap hitter, but this season has the potential and has come through with some power. Hit a home run in the final regular season game against UCLA. Or rather, excuse me, the game before against Arizona State. Excuse me, on the final weekend of the season, she had a home run there. Shelton coming inside to the batter so far. Maybe she want to... Uh, See if she can't uh, convince him to stay back off the plate a bit. Drops one foul. Storseth with good speed down the line is the school's career and single season stolen base record holder, too, for our folks in the Southeast seeing this team for the first time. When the Huskies get these two women on, they can fly. Brown on second base. Storseth looking to move her up to third. Corners in tight, 2-1. Takes it upstairs, and Washington trying to maybe get to two runners in position for Sarah Pickering to do some work. Shelton up and in again. We should keep an eye on her mix, see if she moves the ball around the plate, and there she does. Ball down a little more, a little more to the outside. Full count now to Storseth. Tried to bloop it over the infield, but playing the left fielder misses the ball. Stone has it go off her glove. Brown will score easily. Storseth rounding second will stand up at third. Well, she had the potential to. She went ahead and took the slide, and Washington on the board on the error on left fielder Rachel Stone. Too bad for Jacksonville as Storseth put that ball, hung that ball just a little bit too much, and it was uh, catchable, but uh, Rachel Stone couldn't get the glove on it, ends up uh, dropping the ball. Storseth is now standing on third. Here, take a look at it right now. Peg, let's see if the wind does anything to this at all. It does look like it's got a hook on it because you can see Stone coming in and then really turning back to her right to try to get 
uh, the ball in her glove. So the wind was coming across just in that direction. That's a good call time. Maybe wind and, and potentially a little bit of nerves here in this game against the number one team in the country. Sarah Pickering steps in with a runner at third. First pitch outside to her from Shelton. Was that uh, was that last uh, hit by Storza, Storza staff uh, a hit or an error? Did we get a ruling on that? Got a, it's an error on the left fielder okay. all the way. Yeah. Okay. Called strike to Pickering. Pickering, one of three hitters. We showed you the three: Church, Klein, and Pickering, with 50 or more RBIs this season. And the sun peeks out, at least momentarily, in Seattle. 1-1, one, one, fouled back. Take a look at the Pac-10 stats. You'll see Sarah Pickering in eight offensive categories. She just really shows up everywhere. She, she just does it all. Number one in the Pac-10 in doubles with 23. She's got the also tied uh, uh, for uh, best in hits on her team with 77. And you saw where she stood in the all-time list. Several Washington players in the NCAA marks. Klein on deck, Washington with a run in and nobody out here in the bottom of the first. And a good look at Ann Shelton once again. He'll try to settle down a bit. Ball again up. Full count to Pickering. We mentioned earlier about uh, McKibben not striking out much. This is a young lady who doesn't strike out too often either. Payoff pitch from Shelton, line foul. Russo tight on the line at first, might have been able to make a play on the ball had it been another foot or so and into fair territory, but Pickering had plenty on that ball. She sure did, that that, uh, that ball came off her bat in a hurry and uh, Russo at first, uh, if she'd have gotten any of the ball at all, it would have been a foul territory obviously, but uh, Sarah a little behind the pitch there, unless she's trying to go behind uh, the runner, you know, and, and go to the right field She is pitches. able to do that, move the ball around rather well at different places on the field. She's got room to right center field as the right fielder, Vickers, is playing tight against the line. This one into center field should be deep enough to score the runner. Freeman with the catch. Her throw coming in will not be cut off, but Storseth is ahead of the throw, and it's 2-0 in favor of Washington as Pickering picks up the RBI, her 54th of the season. And McKibben doing a nice job of blocking the plate, but Tammy Storseth just comes flying in from third base and dives in head first. She gets her hand underneath uh, and between McKibben's feet to score that run. So just right off the catch in center field, Tammy Storseth scoring the second run for the Huskies here in the first inning. Big boost for Washington is the Huskies get two runs without the benefit of a hit so far in the inning and a called strike on the outside corner to catcher Jennifer Klein. Well, here we have the second of the two women that we featured in the open for the Huskies. Jennifer Klein, the catcher, with a big stick up the back. Good pitch there by Shelton. She's put the last two right on the corner. Called strike three. Klein a little stunned as she goes back to the dugout. This is a big out for Shelton. Well, this is what we uh, talked about. And of course, that ball is uh, wow. well outside, and that's wow. why the crowd was reacting that way. So now the, you know, the batter is going to have to get an idea of what the umpire strike zone is going to be. But that ball was a bit outside. Now, it was a bit outside. I will give you the proviso, however, that our center field camera is about 10 feet to the left of center field, so it's not a straightaway shot. That one knocked down by Russo. She'll make the play to retire Michelle Church and end the inning. So Shelton able to settle down, but Washington gets on the board. Two runs on no hits, one big error. Nobody left on base. At the end of one, Washington leads Jacksonville State two to nothing. Yeah. Yes. This isn't gonna work. Okay. How are you? Well, I'm trying to survive everything. Doing okay. Okay.
Yes. Uh, yes. I'll see you later, Corky. Gotta use more tape. <laughs> That's not gonna help. That's just not gonna cut it a little uh, bit. We'll see. We go to the top of the second inning. Pitcher Ann Shelton leads things off for Jacksonville State to be followed by right fielder Stephanie Vickers and shortstop Annie Simpson. There's Heather Meyer, one of the three pitchers who's seen starting duties for Washington, and usually their leadoff pitcher in doubleheaders this season, Peg. Heather has uh, just had an outstanding, especially second half of the season, a senior, as you say, and generally the number one pitcher, but uh, Coach Wilson going with Eve gone, and so far she uh, handled Jacksonville State 3 3 down in the first inning. Doing called, a nice job. Called strike to Shelton. Hit 400 a season ago. That's fourth best on the Jacksonville State list. And as you saw, over 350 again this season. But she's in the hole, 0 and 2. First time ever for a Jacksonville State team to take on a number one ranked team in any program. And this is the first nationally ranked team that Jacksonville State has faced all season long. And the only team that uh, Jacksonville and Shelton goes down on strikes. The only team that uh, Jacksonville has played this year that's in the tournament is uh, Troy State. Let's take a look here as God delivers the payoff pitch, and that's the first out of the inning. We've got a real wide home plate so far here <laughs> through the first inning and a half or so, as you see Ann Shelton's reaction. Second strikeout for Eve Gaw. Stephanie Vickers. Four-year high school All-Stater and the most experienced player in this Jacksonville State program, as we mentioned, with so many junior college transfers. Vickers was a player of the week back in March in her conference, so she's had a, a couple of good runs. Looking forward to seeing her throw the ball. I hear she's got an outstanding arm. Tar making the play in fair territory for the second out. Heather Tar coming in for the short little pop up from third base. Makes the easy catch. A look at the Husky Softball Stadium from high atop. The football complex, 200 feet down the lines, 220 to straightaway center field. And shortstop Annie Simpson, another junior college All-American, steps in. Boy, that ball had a ton of break on it from Gaw. <laughs> you know, they called her the wild thing, and just a year ago, she threw about 29 wild pitches. And we'll take a look at Eve Gaw. She delivers this ball. But, boy, she sure has gotten things under control. That ball was right up the middle, as she's only thrown about nine wild pitches this year. So she's well down from last year's count, and uh, they're going to have to give her a new nickname pretty soon. Big whip on the follow-up to that pitch, too. She really got everything behind it. Simpson's number's there. She's got one one home run only, but she's batting well over 300. Gaw has been solid so far here through the first inning and two-thirds, really finding the plate and uh, kind of overpowering Jacksonville State here at the start. Well, you know, the fact ten is just so solid top to bottom. There's the look at Teresa Wilson behind the batter there, the Huskies head coach. Ball a little inside. Now you know why they call her wild thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that ball was uh, on the belt there. That'll back you off the plate in a hurry. <laughs> Annie Simpson's uh, catching her breath and wanting to stand right back in there. One, two pitch. Did she go around? They call it anyway and ring it up. Simpson strikes out. Gaw has three strikeouts through the first two innings. Jacksonville State, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning. It's Washington 2, Jacksonville State nothing on Prime Sports. Ten minutes downwind, two and a half hours on the follow leg back. <laughs> it's a strong day, and we've got sailboats. Also, the cruise shells out. Now did the first pitch count there as uh, Becky Newbury had stepped out, but I think I heard our home plate umpire, Mike McDermott, call it a ball. Let's see now time going to be called by McKibben. And uh, I think a little confusion. It is 1-0, so the pitch counted even though Newbury had stepped out. Fortunately for her, 
It wasn't called a strike. That one is, however, as Newbury leads off the bottom of the second inning for Washington. Becky Newbury, a freshman who plays in right field, starts, has just been solid for the Huskies, leads the team in triples. So she's not only got some power, she's got some wheels. Originally recruited at Washington as a volleyball player. For, well, perhaps that was her visit to campus, but then went to the softball program instead. She pops in foul territory to Jennifer Russo for out number one. Newber getting into that ball and just popping it up in the air. Not going to be pleased with that. Jacksonville State gets an easy out. Called strike to Janine Giordano. The designated player today. So Ann Shelton has settled down or retired the last four in a row after giving up two runs on a hit batsman and an error. Giordano hitting better than 300 as so many of the Huskies do. We showed you Jacksonville State's numbers. Washington at 344 team batting average. A pop to second and it hangs there for Terry Moore for the second out. Shelton jammed Giordano as that ball came off the handle of the bat. D didn't have a chance to get anywhere out of the infield. See Giordano, she pulls her, you can see her pull her wrists in a little bit and that ball hits very, very well in on the handle. That'll bring up left fielder Mindy Williams, who along with Michelle Church, one of two players to participate in every game in this four year program's history. 257 now, straight starts. A pair of rabbits, they keep going and going and going. I won't mention the brand name, but I think you get the point. Called strike and it's one and one. Well, something off that one from Shelton, it's one, two. And so far we've really seen sort of a power pitching game by Ann Shelton, Peg. Well, she really does bring the ball comes straight at you. She turns her right wrist over almost as if she had a golf club in her hand and uh, turning her wrist over over the ball. And Going uh, back to your basics, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, going, going back to one of my loves anyway. 2-2 yeah. two -two pitch. And another pop-up. This one in a Texas Leaguer area, but it's grabbed by Rhonda Freeman in the center. And Washington is retired in order in the second inning. Nothing across for the Huskies. Two innings are in the book in Seattle. It's Washington 2, Jacksonville State nothing. Stay tuned. We'll have more softball action from Seattle next on Prime Sports. Top half of the third inning, seven, eight, nine hitters for Jacksonville State. Third baseman, Rachel Riddell. First baseman, Jennifer Russo. And the designated player, Jennifer Jolly. Riddell, a junior college All-American at Lake City Community College in Illinois before heading down to Jacksonville. one -oh pitch from Eve Gaw called strike. Defense pretty well straight away for Riddell. Just got a piece of that pitch, and it's one and two. Riddell also the backup pitcher for Jacksonville State, so when she's uh, not playing third, or I should say when Shelton's not throwing the ball, Riddell's the, in there. And the two of them change positions. If Riddell comes in, Shelton moves over to third, so they stay in the lineup. Not a lot of depth for the Lady Gamecocks. That one backhanded by Tarr. Comes up cleanly and makes the play. A nice defensive stop by Heather Tarr. Heather Tarr did a nice job of keeping that ball in front of her. Actually, off to the side, but keeping it from getting out of the infield, which is very important, obviously. So she gets her glove over on it and uh, knocks the ball down, but she's got time to scoop it up, fire it over to Michelle Church at first. A look at the Washington third baseman as Jennifer Russo steps in. First one fouled back over our heads. Just barely. <laughs> Russo, another first team all-conference player for Jack State. Hits 355. Popped back once again. 
Got to make that play. <laughs> In the hole, Owen to Russo, another top uh, junior college player led South Suburban Junior College of Illinois into a top three national finish in both of her junior college years. So Jana McGinnis really found some talent in a hurry from all over the East and Midwest. She really did bring them in from the community college ranks and the JUCO leagues and has some fine players who put, put this team together. Russo recorded on a strikeout. Gaw picking up her fourth as we take a second look. Take a look at Eve Gaw come straight at you with that left foot and really driving off the pitcher's plate. That ball dropping down. A little bit of a sliding action uh, on it. Dropping down and in. Peg, here's Eve Gaw with about 83 strikeouts and 129 innings of work, but she's tallied four so far this game as she sets to face Jennifer Jolly. Jennifer with one foot out of the box before she took a cut. Well, I'll tell you what, the Pac-10 is a extremely difficult league to play in in terms of seeing great competition day after day after day and uh, so the, the batters that these pitchers face are, are excellent they can uh, swing the bat they can get contact the pitchers ERAs maybe a little bit uh, higher due to the excellence of the hitters in the Pac-10 and um, I got to be honest I'm not familiar with the league uh, the TAC league to, to know what kind of uh, teams that these young women from Jacksonville State face um, Although Ann Shelton seems to have their number with her 330 strikeouts. But Eve Gaw, as you say, really does uh, seem to have her rhythm going today. And she's been uh, really coming with some nice pitches. Last heater looked nice, but it was called outside. It's two and one. <laughs> Jolly uh, well behind that fastball. Eve Gaw really moving the ball around well. She's getting to both sides of the plate, uh, out and in, a uh, little up and down. 2-2 pitch to Jolly, the number nine hitter. She got a piece of it, but Peg, you watch every time that left foot's going out of the box before she takes a cut at the ball. Well, and that's going to hurt her, uh, obviously, down the line. You really want to go right at your pitcher. Her feet are not really set firmly. She's almost shortened her, her balance point with that first little step. Right, I agree. She needs to really st step into it a little bit better. Swinging strike. She stands there as the ball gets away from Klein. They finally track it down. The tough throw is dropped, and the runner is safe. So uh, everybody doing their least on that one, and then Pickering, the second baseman, got stepped on, so she's a little bit sore. Excuse me, that's Church, rather. Well, that was not a pretty series of events. Uh, first of all, the ball was low, may have been in the dirt. We'll take a look at it. Eve Gaw bringing the ball in, and uh, as you say, the batter Jennifer Jolly waiting a moment, and uh, Washington having time to make the play down to first, but Michelle Church can't dig the throw up, and uh, Jennifer Jolly finds herself safe on first uh, after striking out. Almost as if she took her eyes off the ball a little bit. You can see she's still hurting. Church kind of taking her time as the uh, Huskies conferring a bit, checking on their first baseman. So the first runner of the game for Jacksonville State is aboard Jennifer Jolly on at first after the fifth strikeout for Gaw as you get another look at our site. Clouds blowing in over the center field fence and things turning a bit gray once again. And Rhonda Freeman will step in for her second at bat. She fouled out into uh, Sarah Pickering, the second baseman, to lead off the game. Freeman just a sophomore, but she started every game in her career at Jacksonville State, so she's got a lot of confidence uh, in the, the coaching staff in her direction. Down in the count now, 0-2. Real nice throw. You see Eve Gott had a very different delivery there. She stepped across her body and, uh, and then really threw hard across her body, coming back in towards, the, towards home plate. Has a number of different looks. Well, the Lady Gamecocks have really been kept off balance, it seems, by Goss so far through the first three. She's doing a nice job of mixing her pitches uh, again. She's uh, hitting uh, all, all four corners of the strike zone. Picks up strikeout number six to retire Jacksonville State in the third. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the third inning with our score. Washington two, Jacksonville State nothing. This.
The number nine hitter for Washington, Heather Tarr, will lead things off in the bottom of the third. Then we'll return to the top of the order for center fielder Shelly Brown and the shortstop Tammy Storseth. And it is getting threatening again here in Seattle. That's behind the right field bleachers. Part of this brand new softball stadium. Again, for our friends in the Southeast, we'll tell you about that. The winner of this game will face the Oklahoma State Cowgirls, who came from behind in the seventh to defeat the Indiana Hoosiers in the first game of today's double elimination format. Hoosiers still alive, can advance out of the regional. Loser of this contest faces Indiana tomorrow. Our championship scheduled for Sunday. To those three runs in that game scored in the seventh as uh, Oklahoma State led one to nothing. Hoosiers came back in the seventh, got a run, tied it up, but Oklahoma State answered. Tar to shortstop where Annie Simpson throws her out. And a routine play with a grounder over shortstop. Pulled it right in and fired it off for the first out. Just to tell folks in the southeast a little bit about this stadium, you should get a look at Annie Simpson. Uh, this uh, really is just a new look. The bench is going into place this week. They had stadium seats behind home plate a week ago, but uh, Washington played its first 40 plus games on the road this season. Of course, the fine Northwest spring weather part of it, but uh, this stadium under construction as well. And uh, they had to face that and overcome a little bit of adversity with that many contests on the road before they finally returned home and got some of their games in. Well, the good news is they played 16 in the last, last 20 here at home, so they're very comfortable here in their new stadium and the people working around the clock to get this thing ready for this regional tournament. Shelly Brown pops up to short. A little possible collision is Stone, the left fielder, coming clear into the infield was calling Simpson off the ball, but Simpson took it and held on to it for out number two. Well, clearly that was Simpson's uh, ball to catch, and here we see the little bit of pop-up, and the ball is in the infield on the dirt, and here comes Stone all the way from left field uh, taking out her shortstop, and it's, they're lucky that uh, Simpson hang on to the of the ball. As Storseth was coming up to the plate, Annie Simpson turned back around to Rachel Stone and made sort of a, a pushing motion with one hand. Okay, back off. When, when, when you feel dirt, don't come in any, <laughs> any closer, Rachel. Yes. Yeah. Clearly, uh, Simpson had the right away on that. Just shows you how much the ball is holding up as the wind is blowing straight in from center now. Storseth way out in front of the off-speed pitch and watched over her shoulder to see it sail outside. It's a 2-1 count. A little slapper to short, but it sits up nicely for Simpson, and Annie's involved in all three outs in the inning for the Lady Gamecocks. For Washington, nothing across as Shelton has now retired the last nine hitters. We're through three innings. It's Washington 2, Jacksonville State nothing. You're watching Prime Sports for the best in the Northwest. We move to the top of the fourth inning, and for the gang of Jeffersons down in Jacksonville, Alabama, your two, three, four hitters are coming up. Rachel Stone, the left fielder, will lead things off. Stone's done some damage at bat that's, for that's where Jack the, State. That's where the elite meet, by the way, in Jacksonville. So now that you know. <laughs> I must admit, I've if been I ever get, to this point. If I ever get down there, I'm covered now, I figure. <laughs> yeah. so. Gomez is inside. It's 2-0 to Stone. She'll be followed by Wendy McKibben and then Ann Shelton. Continuing to get darker and darker here in Seattle. That's just not the time of day either. Just down the first baseline foul as the pull shot from Stone makes it two and two. 1994 Junior College All-American is a Rachel Stone. to the count now. Now you've got really had some uh, movement on that ball and, and I don't know if you, you'll notice Todd but she's got her fingernails painted black. You've got <laughs> so that might be it. That's to help hide that optic yellow softball yeah. <laughs> Sharply at tar off her glove. Storseth not in time. Church and the, the first hit of the ball game for either team as Rachel Stone is aboard for the Lady Gamecocks. And Michelle Church at first with a great stretch, but uh, with the deflection off Tar and over to Storseth, the, the ball is just moving um, too, mu too much distance to, to make the play in such an uh, amount of time. So deflected off Tar, Storseth picks it up clean. Church with a big stretch. 
Well, like gymnastics, but the runner's safe. Well, as you said, Peg, in this game, if you have any hold up at all or a slow hop with the short base pass, it's not going to happen. Popped up, chance for double play, no, because Pickering, the second baseman, could not get back in time. But Gaw fielding cleanly retires McKibben, so the most dangerous hitter in the Lady Gamecocks lineup goes down on the sacrifice attempt. Well, that's good news for the Huskies, and the good news for Jacksonville State is that the Rachel Stone got back to first in time as Pickering was not able to get back over to first base to cover. And of course, that's uh, one of the cardinal uh, sins of bunting. You've got to put that ball to the ground. You see how huge a gap there was had Pickering been over to cover on the play. Fielded again by Gaw, throws to Storseth for one to first, not in time. So good speed down the line for Shelton to stay alive on the fielder's choice. And the Huskies uh, with a chance at a double play in, in uh, Eve Gaw doing a nice job but with uh, taking some balls right back at her in the pitcher's circle. Gets the lead runner and stir Seth just again uh, with not enough time to get uh, the runner at first. 1-6, Shelton on on the fielder's choice. And with two gone, Stephanie Vickers will be the batter. Vickers popped out the third in her first at bat. Okay, start moving those lights over from the football stadium. Get the generators going. Inside, it's one and one. Annie Simpson waiting on deck for the Lady Gamecocks if Shelton, or rather Vickers, is able to move Shelton up. One, two, and you can see how late right now Jack State is swinging behind Eve Goss pitches. Well, Eve's a strong gal in uh, she really, she really has a, isn't a, a, a rhythm, even though she's given up a hit here. Uh, she's just bringing the heat, and she does it again. Seven strikeouts for Gaw through four innings of work. For Jacksonville State, no runs on a hit. First of the game, no errors, one runner left on base. We're midway through our first round regional game. Washington leads Jacksonville State 2-0. Welcome back to Seattle. The first batter of the bottom of the fourth inning, Sarah Pickering, has just reached base on an error on second baseman Terry Moore. A grounder that Moore failed to field cleanly. It was not a, a difficult ball at all, and Pickering is aboard. Second error of the game for Jacksonville State, and Shelton has not given up a hit to Washington yet, but finds herself trailing 2-0. And, of course, the error at the start of the game part of the problem and now as you can see rain finally uh, starting to fall here at Seattle and we'll be able to spot the Jacksonville State fans in a hurry here they'll be the ones without the umbrellas probably <laughs> well the Husky fans are prepared as there are many umbrellas uh, just popping up all over the place but the the game is going on right now Shelton throwing the ball. You can also see from this view, though, the wind that's swirling through the infield, and uh, the ground is not wet yet, so the the dirt's getting kicked up and into the eyes of the players just a little bit. An odd combination. We can get some muddy faces here in a minute. Jennifer Klein looking down to her coach, Teresa Wilson, and uh, now the coaches are walking down the line, and I think we're about ready to take a break here. Well, there's an Indiana cream and crimson umbrella down in front of us, so uh, the Hoosier fans came prepared. The Husky band has its ponchos on, and we're going to vacate the field for the time being and get those tarps out. The field really is in pretty good shape here, as you can tell. It's uh, been tarped on the infield and is holding up quite well, and the outfield's in good shape, and the Husky crew getting ready to put the tarp down as we will have a runner aboard with nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. Again, Pickering reaching base on the error on the second baseman, Terry Moore. And Klein will be at the plate. Our rain delay situation right now. 2-1 again was the score of the first game, Oklahoma State beating Indiana. And while we sit in the rain, we'll get some of the scores of the other NCAA regionals for you in just a second just to pass them along. We're going to go ahead and take a timeout and then come back to Seattle and give you some more information. We're in a rain delay right now, bottom of the fourth inning in Seattle. Post Washington, the number one seed, leading the number four seed, Jacksonville State, 2-0. Stay tuned. We'll return with more softball action after this timeout.
Welcome back to Seattle. The rain starting to come down in sheets and come down hard as Washington leads it 2 nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Uh, the wind blowing the tarp as they try to get it down as well and threatening to swallow a few people. We are going to step aside right now with our live coverage in Seattle. Again, Washington leads it 2 nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Invite those of you in the Prime Sports audience to stay tuned for Prime Cuts. We'll keep you posted on our occurrences here at the softball regionals. But right now, we have a rain delay. Washington leading at 2 nothing. Stay tuned. We'll see you in a bit. You're watching Prime Sports for the best in the Northwest. And welcome back to Soggy Softball Stadium. Actually, we're at Husky Softball Stadium in Seattle. We're just about ready to resume action. The diamond dust being spread along the warning track, although nobody's come close to getting the ball out that far through our first three and a half innings plus. We will resume action in the bottom of the fourth inning with Washington at bat, one runner aboard, and nobody out. The Huskies leading Jacksonville State as you get a look at the Lady Gamecocks head coach, Jana McGinnis. 2-0 is our score. Washington getting its runs without a hit. In fact, the Huskies still hitless in the ball game, but here's how it happened in the first inning. Shelly Brown led off the bottom of the first, was hit by a pitch, stole second. You see her on there, and Tammy Storseth sent this fly ball to left field, Peg Reese. Hooking hard past the left fielder, Rachel Stone, and she has to run to the warning track. First ball actually to get out there in the Real strong breeze coming in from the south, and that ball just tailed off out of her reach. Brown scored. Storseth made it all the way to third to make it 1-0. Then Sarah Pickering followed with this sacrifice fly to center field to Rhonda Freeman. That made it 2-0 in favor of Washington, which is where we stand right now. Two errors on Jacksonville State. They have one infield single. This game has pretty much belonged to the pitchers so far, and Shelton has settled down after giving up these two runs, and Eve Gaw has been a very effective for Washington thus far. Well, Shelton uh, giving up a couple runs, but uh, with a not exactly solid fielding from her teammates. Eve Gaw has, on the other hand, has really been in a rhythm, has uh, quite a few strikeouts um, through a four innings. She's just having real good motion on her ball. She's using the whole, hitting the whole strike zone and I think feeling pretty good. Uh, she's been warming up as has uh, Heather Meyer. And Heather Meyer is just gonna say, as there you see Teresa Wilson, immediately behind her, if our guys can go to the left right there, you can see that uh, Heather Meyer is warming up in the background. Uh, another one of Washington's three starters. And there's a look at the Jacksonville State team huddle as they get ready to resume play. They will be in the field. And there is Heather Meyer. As we mentioned, she along with Gaw and Stephanie Burns have been the three starters for Washington. And it'll be interesting to see what Teresa Wilson decides to come up with when we resume action. Well, and the break really is no worse than a uh, break between games. And pitchers often pitch both games, so uh, they're used to throwing a number of innings and then breaking for 20 to 30 minutes and throwing again. So it's not unusual for softball pitchers to have this kind of break in the action. I don't think it's going to mean anything to these uh, young women mentally. It's more uh, what has the weather done to the field and and uh, how does everybody refocus? Now Washington definitely has the luxury of going either direction right now. Here's what Eve Dodd did, did rather before the rain, one of seven strikeouts, and uh, the heat's been coming across from Eve Gaw throughout the game. Yeah, she's been bringing it uh, on uh, both sides of the plate. Again, she's been hitting the black inside and out. Uh, she, her balls uh, will drop down and, and break in. She's uh, She can bring them high, so uh, Eve not getting uh, Jacksonville State much to swing at, uh, although they do have the only hit in the game, as you've said. We've just heard in on the radio. Apparently, they are looking out in the outfield track uh, where our NCAA representative is. They're looking at the warning track, and they have deemed that it's unplayable and unsafe right now. They're making the announcement to the fans. So it's going to be about another 15 minutes. And I'll let our guys in the truck know, too. They're saying approximately 15 more minutes still of groundskeeping work that's going to be necessary to make that warning track safe and playable. Uh, I went down during the break and walked on some of the infield area and on the warning track, and it was very thick mud, clay-like mud, and definitely would be uh, difficult should a play be necessary. But with the diamond dust, they're going to be able to clean that up. Again, as we said, no one's come close to A, hitting a ball into the wind, and B, hitting it that far. But, of course, they need to keep the field safe for the players and the teams. So the maintenance continues. We are going to step aside now, we've been informed, and rejoin prime cuts 
for about the next 15 minutes or so. We'll give you some other scores from around the country when we return as well. Some interesting developments in this College World Series regional action. Stay tuned. We'll be back in about 15 minutes with more action from Seattle. And welcome back to Seattle. We want to thank all of you for your patience and uh, glad to have you still with us. We're ready to resume action. This is Todd Pickett along with Peg Grace. We are in the bottom of the fourth inning in Seattle. Washington at bat leading it by a score of two to nothing as we get set. Sarah Pickering on at first and Jennifer Klein with a 1-0 count ready to step in against Ann Shelton. And a count one and one. They finally got uh, most of the outfield track done, and they had to chase a pair of obstinate mallards off the field as well. Well, and everybody's in new unis, nice and dry, nice and clean. Jacksonville State wisely going to the long pans finally. Welcome to the Northwest. <laughs> yes, and Washington, Washington uh, changing, changing to the purples, and Ann Shelton getting set to pitch. We want to welcome all our fans in the southeast watching again on Time Warner cable in the Aniston and Jacksonville, Alabama areas. Late night with softball, bumped by the Washington catcher, only one play and a fine fielding play there by Rachel Riddell at third. There's the runner Pickering at second. Meanwhile, Klein is down at first as she stumbled going down the line and is limping a little bit. Well, Jennifer Klein, a big hitter, Often just swinging the bat, we'll take a look at her turning to put the bunt down, which she does nicely and is not called on to do an awful lot, but she did a nice job of it. Uh, but it's thrown out at first base, and then after she she uh, gets going there, she loses her balance and, and uh, rolls a couple times, but she's up. Didn't appear to uh, collide with the second baseman, Terry Moore, but Washington now trying to pick up another run here, stretch their lead a little bit. Michelle Church, the batter. For those of you who may be wondering, should we have another rain delay, they still will attempt to play the full seven innings, not call a game after five on account of rain at all. If it needed to, they'd resume tomorrow morning, the second day of this double elimination tournament. And Shelton has held Washington hitless so far through the first three and a third innings. And two and one, the count now to Michelle Church. Becky Newbury is on deck for Washington. Ann's used to getting a few more strikeouts than she's had in this game so far with just the one, but she's been um, steady in there and bringing the ball to the Huskies, not letting any hits really escape. Two right, a line drive fielded nicely by Stephanie Vickers. Again, the ball holding up just a bit as the wind is going from right to left. At first contact, Washington fans thought that that one might drop in. Vickers makes the play, and Pickering wisely got back to second base in time. Well, that ball wasn't hit to the fielder, but it too tailed off uh, this time a little bit of a slice and uh, came towards the fielder as she just charged the, charged the infield. Newbury fouled out to the first baseman, Jennifer Russo, to open the second inning. Outfield in shallow again, uh, the wind blowing in. There's not much that's going to get very deep right now. One and one, the count. Rain continuing again now as it's uh, returned and returning just mildly so far. What, what we call playable rain so far. Newbury chasing a bad one there, and it's one and two. Of course, uh, last Sunday, the Huskies hosting UCLA in the final doubleheader of the Pac-10 season, a game that uh, rained from the second inning on. So uh, this is playable rain and no need to get excited just yet. Got to within one out of finishing the game and then had the rain hit. That loss, by the way, was Washington's only home defeat in 20 home games this season. One, two pitch, just misses and it's two and two. Shelton ready with the 2-2 pitch. Popped foul right over our heads. And yeah, just misses us. That's about the fourth time today. They're starting to zero in. They're <laughs> fighting us. It's tough getting the range and your bearings in the rain here, but wind now blowing almost straight into our faces. 2-2 to Newbury. Tough, tough conditions for 
both pitcher and hitter right now. I mean, tough to maintain your footing out on the mound, keep a grip on the ball, and then with the hitter with the wind gusting in and rain. Sarah Pickering out on second base, took a lead and almost lost her feet as she uh, stopped to see what was happening with the pitch. Full count pitch is fouled off. A little surprised Pickering didn't get a little bit quicker jump on that one, knowing that it's 3-2 with two out. Yeah, something's going to happen. Newbury staying alive, though. She's She's been contacting a number of balls here in this at bat. Shelton set again, misses upstairs, and two are aboard now. The DP, Janine Giordano, scheduled to hit. First walk of the game for Shelton now. One hit by pitch. That was Shelly Brown, who led off the bottom of the first, getting hit, and just the one strikeout. Giordano popped to second base in her first at bat. Pickering on at second, Newbury at first. Nice play there by McKibben coming back out. Giordano's got uh, some work ahead of her here. She's got a couple of runners on. To right center field, Freeman underneath it. And makes the grab to retire Washington in the fourth inning for the Huskies. No runs on no hits. There was one Jacksonville State error. Two runners left on base. The rain continues in Seattle. We move to the fifth. Washington leading Jacksonville State two to nothing. This is why you do your spot charts in pencil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's hit to uh, uh, somebody. somebody. In blue. <laughs> it's Puddles the dog, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that lovely? Oh good, now we've got the drums right in the, in the net sound mic, oh good. <laughs> do we have any of those other scores loaded or do you want me to just do them verbal guys okay at your discretion then no problem Goff. Goff, Goff. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Six, seven, eight hitters scheduled for Jacksonville State. Shortstop, Annie Simpson. Third baseman, Rachel Riddell. And the first baseman, Jennifer Russo. Eve Gaw back out on the mound for Washington. Off to a very strong start so far with seven strikeouts in the first four innings. Simpson was one of those victims. As Gaw retired, actually the first nine hitters in a row, but the ninth one, Jolly, got on board. After a wild pitch on the strikeout, you can see the rain coming back down once again. Not nearly as strong as we had to our first delay, but uh, still pretty heavy and starting to show on the infield skin a little bit. And getting a little colder as the minutes tick away. But our forecast for Saturday is... Oh. <laughs> Well, our forecast for Saturday uh, More the has same, uh, right? three games, too. So NC 2A committee hoping that they get those in. Caught the top rail. Today is supposed to have been, but keep your fingers crossed, now that we repeat this, the worst weather day of the weekend with things supposed to clear Saturday and Sunday. Again, the championship game scheduled for Sunday afternoon. We'll have that game for you on a tape delay basis Sunday night on Prime Sports. 2-1 pitch. Just misses. Simpson showing some patience, standing in and 
making Ibga come to her. Both these pitchers trying to shake off a little bit of rust as they get back into action. And it's a full count now. I think for folks who haven't seen softball before, Peg, it, you mentioned pitchers coming back in the doubleheaders. It's such a natural motion for a pitcher to deliver that the rain delay really doesn't mean having to go to a second pitcher as you would in baseball. Exactly. Really, the the, thing, the factor that would be the, the biggest determinant here as to how uh, they're doing is the, the coolness as the uh, temperature is dropping just a little bit, but certainly not throwing um, after a uh, break in the action or uh, too many innings. So uh, I would expect Eve Gaw to, unless she is allows herself to be hampered by the coolness, to just hang in there and keep firing him. Simpson draws the walk, first from Gaw of the game. She's the third Jacksonville State base runner. And Rachel Riddell, who grounded to third in the third inning, will be the batter. Riddell showing bunt for just a second as uh, Coach Wilson comes out to talk to her thrower and brings the infield in. They're going to gonna talk to each other just a little bit. As you can see, this isn't a strategy conference. This is direct pep talk time from coach to pitcher. Well, Teresa Wilson, a fine pitcher uh, at Missouri in her day, who still holds most of the pitching records back there. She really knows what she's talking about. I'm sure she's got good advice for her young thrower. Again, this is one of eight regionals across the country, taking a look at some of the other scores so far in regional action. In the first game here in Seattle, Oklahoma State defeated Indiana 2-1. Indiana falling into the loser's bracket. We'll get some more for you as we continue. 1-0 dropped. Church to Pickering. Good reach by the second baseman as that power throw from Church almost took off. Well, she threw it on a rope. The rope was just a little tall. But uh, Sarah Pickering pulled it in, and the Huskies rack up another out. A look at the play once again. A very good fielding team in Washington. The bunt really nicely set down. It's got to head straight for the ground. It does, and so uh, Riddell advances a runner. Annie Simpson uh, at second is uh, two for two in stolen bases, so hasn't been called to run on a lot. Seemed to have pretty good speed getting down the line that time, and Jennifer Russo, the batter, off the fist, Church will make the play unassisted. Simpson advances to third with two gone. And Jacksonville State finding themselves with a, a runner as far along as they've had uh, all day as, uh, as uh, the runner uh, Simpson yes. is around a third Simpson's base. Simpson's the first one to get past first base, as a matter of fact. And now the batter will be Jennifer Jolly. Struck out her first time up, but made it to first when the ball got by catcher Jennifer Klein. As we said, you saw the uh, one score from Seattle and other Pac-10 teams in action. And uh, Troy State, uh, conference foe of Jacksonville State, also in action today. Called strike. It's one and one. And I believe Troy State drew Arizona. Am I? That's right. Am I correct? Foul tip, and it's one and two. Arizona, the number two team in the country, having to go back to Tallahassee, Florida, where they are the top seed in that regional, but still playing on the road. You see the Jack State dugout. South Florida knocked off by Florida State in the first game of that regional at Tallahassee. Arizona leading Troy State in the second. Again, the Wildcats, the number one seed there, number two team in the country. One two pitch set from Goff. South Carolina eliminating Notre Dame. Time called now so we can show you a few more scores. This one a bit of a surprise. Michigan is the number one seed in this regional at Ann Arbor and being beat right now by Central Michigan. And Iowa knocked off UNLV a three over a two. That one fouled at the plate and it stays one and two. Well, Eve Goss still uh, taking her time out on the field, which is uh, Good for her. She needs to keep her pace. There's another score. Nebraska. Nebraska, a number three seed, beating Minnesota in the uh, tournament at Lafayette, Louisiana. Then at Amherst, Massachusetts. Massachusetts beating Connecticut. The two beat the three, one nothing. And the top seed in that one, Princeton over Boston University. Number one beat number four by a score of one nothing. But a couple, or one other interesting partial to pass along here, and it's a big one. 
for the West Coast. We'll get it in a second. 2-2 is upstairs, and it's a full count. Cal State Fullerton leading UCLA early in that game by a score of 5-1 in Fullerton. So a bit of a surprise there. UCLA coming in first off as the number two seed and then the number four ranked team in the country. But uh, Cal State Fullerton leading the Bruins on their home field right now in another Western Regional. Time called by Jolly. Again, Simpson on at third after the leadoff walk in the inning. Full count pitch from Gaw. And gets to strikeout number eight and prevents Jacksonville State from tallying its first run. For the Gamecocks in the fifth inning, no runs on no hits. There were no Washington errors and one runner left on base. At the end of four and a half innings of play, our regional score, Washington two, Jacksonville State nothing. Stay tuned, we'll have more action on Prime Sports after this. Like an information booth? Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I was going to go, yeah, 995 a score. <laughs> one guy came by and he goes, Are they doing scores? And I go, What? Well, you heard, you know, 1 900. Oh, yeah. He goes, like, I went, Okay, that one registered. Forget it. Read off your card now. Feel free. Yeah. It's little, but it's works. Staying. Welcome back. Bottom of the fifth inning. Eight, nine hitters to start for Washington. The left fielder, Mindy Williams, facing Ann Shelton. Williams flied to center in the third. And or rather the end of the second, excuse me. Sorry, Todd. And uh, recovering from the shoulder surgery in the offseason. Started every game for the Huskies since she got here, which has, uh, uh, as a freshman, played every game for the U of Dub and um, had shoulder surgery in the offseason and still has not missed a beat. Rain continuing, 0-2 the count. Shelton is asking, I think, for a towel, perhaps. I don't know. She's checking with her catcher. 0-2 oh the count. I thought she was asking for something out on the I'd mound I'd be asking there. for a towel yeah. out there or an umbrella or well, something. Well, there you see <laughs> see what that delivery did. Well, and of course, that's one of the things that uh, you have to consider when you're talking about the rain. It's not just the condition of the field, uh, but also the pitcher's plate. Is it safe? Is, is, does she have something to push off there? And, and how's the ball in her hand? Can she keep it dry? Base hit for Washington, first of the game. Williams, who has not had a great series of bats during the uh, closing stretch of the season and in fact is one of the lower hitting regulars in fact bottom of the uh, batting order for Washington regulars comes up with the first base hit of the game for the Huskies well and you know the one of the amazing things about Mindy Williams Todd is that in uh, the NC2A tournament in 1995 she had two hits and they were both home runs <laughs> <laughs> go figure Heather Tarr lines out. Nice play by the second baseman Moore. And with Williams breaking very quickly, there are two gone and the bases are empty. Well, that ball looked like it had a chance to get out of the infield. I'm sure that's what Minnie Williams was thinking, but that's a, a classic uh, base running error in that you need to see the ball either hit the ground or you need to see it um, over the infielder's head. She's just stuck, nowhere to go. Nice double play. But attempt pop foul will drop in just barely right toward the Washington dugout. As Riddell was charging, Shelley Brown scored the first run of the game. Was hit by a pitch in the first, popped out in the third. And just this week named honorable mention Pac-10. One of uh, about eight Pac-10 honors for the Huskies from first team to honorable mention. They really racked it up this season and Brown in the hole now 0 and 2 Teresa Wilson arms crossed walking around in a circle down the third baseline sure a little bit frustrated after getting that leadoff single to have the potential for a third run taken away in an instant 
0-2 pitch, contact, foul. There's Wilson waving at the ball as it skips by. And a credit to Ann Shelton, who has uh, basically quieted the bats of the Huskies. The Huskies are an excellent hitting team and uh, used to getting a little more a uh, little more bat on the ball and getting some more hits uh, per inning and are in the top three in hitting and the Pac-10 are uh, just probably a little frustrated here in this game. Upstairs, one and two. You know, watching these conditions, Peg, you and I have talked about a little bit. I'd have to think that the rain makes it a little bit tougher on the pitchers than on the hitters. They can adjust a little bit more and uh, still have pretty good traction, pretty good footing at the batter's box, but it's tough for the pitchers to do what they want to do with the ball. It, it really is, and there's one up the middle. Boy, I tell you, if, uh, if uh, Heather Tarr hadn't hit into what turned out to be a double play, uh, the Huskies would have loaded it up and uh, really been sitting pretty. But a as it is, that this runner is on a nice uh, slap form by Shelly Brown right there. She pokes it up the middle, but uh, they're sitting with two outs and uh, one runner on first. You saw her talking mechanics briefly on first base with John Rittman, who is Washington's hitting coach. And Tammy Storseth, the batter. Storseth hit the ball to left that turned into a three base error, scoring Brown, and she came around to score the only runs in the game thus far. And it's 2 and 0 to Storseth. She also grounded to short in the third inning. And this view gives you a little bit of a look at what the weather's doing again. And yes, the wind is blowing the rain that direction. Uh, <laughs> do not adjust, adjust your set. The diagonal rain is uh, part of the picture today. Boy, the middle infield right back behind second base starting to get a little bit muddy as well. 3-0, now the rain really picking up one more time. And Storseth draws the walk, so two on. And of course, coming into the meat of the Husky lineup with uh, Sarah Pickering, who plays at second base, coming right up. Pickering sack fly to center in the first, reached base on an error on the second baseman Moore to begin the fourth inning. And it was at that point that the showers began, and we've not had a lot of let up since. One zero towards short in time for the third out as uh, Simpson juggled it for just a second but managed to hang on to the ball and Washington is retired. Washington leads Jacksonville State two to nothing. We'll go to the top half of the sixth inning after this timeout. We're gone again, guys. They're gonna pull them right now. I think so. A couple of them are talking about it. Ball just flew into a dugout uh, on a routine throw. Yep, he's Had pulling him. Yeah. Uh, he's looking. Well, he's waving that way. Make up his mind. <laughs> yep, there they go. Calling it. We don't know. Will we confer still? What? Still co confer? All right. They're still going to confer. My guess would be we're toast, guys, but that's just. That's just your guess. Yep. <laughs> we can get another one of these. Huh? Yeah, it is real good. Yeah. Hits the ball to short. Yeah. Is it? No, there's no way. There's no way you can get it ready. Welcome back to Seattle. The rains have resumed once again, and the umpires have pulled the teams off the field at the end of five innings. Again, a reminder: they will attempt to get the full seven innings in, even if it has to continue on to tomorrow morning. So this game is not a completed game yet, even though five innings are in the books. The umpires are going to confer again, but looking here as we get close to 7 o'clock on the West Coast, Peg, 
even if they were able to get the rain to quit rather quickly, they wouldn't have time to get the field cleaned up and dried up in time before darkness would hit the field, of course, not having any lights. And the tarps coming out again to, to cover up the infield as you see uh, Jacksonville State coach and players just looking out and um, some frustration, I think, all around and not uh, really being able to get into a flow of a, a game that's played in a regular duration of about an hour and a half. So a little up and down here weather-wise and uh, just having to go with it. Again, it's 2-0 right now as Washington scored both of its runs in the first inning. And the Huskies coming up with their first two hits of the game in the last inning, but uh, unable to push another run across. The crew getting the tarp down after it had been out in the outfield, so it's been a busy day for the grounds crew as well. Teresa Wilson, who had last rain delay, was out mopping up the infield and sweeping it, is out helping pull the tarp right now. And it's you know, it, it got to be a little bit tough, too. You're able to get your regional out here. You want to show your field and your facility and the, and the university off. And frustrating to have it with such strong wind and rain right now for, for everyone concerned. Definitely uh, frustrating. And this time they've had the team go into the dugout and try to, to get dry and stay dry instead of come out and help with the tarp. So they're... Uh, wanting to keep them warm and I think planning to get back out here. We won't know until we hear from uh, both the officials and the NC2A representative uh, that is here at on site. Well, we hope the weather is a little bit better in Los Angeles where the Washington baseball team is. And in fact, uh, you'll be able to see them coming up in about a half hour here on Prime Sports as they upset second ranked USC yesterday. Another win would move the Huskies into the College w World Series regional action. Right now, however, we want you to stay tuned. The press box is coming up next. If we do not return here, this championship game of this regional tournament is scheduled to be aired on Prime Sports Sunday night at 8 o'clock would be the championship game of this regional here in Seattle. Our best hunch is we may be through for the night. That's not official, but we'll hope the skies lift. We're able to get the rest of the tournament in. Stay tuned to Prime Sports for any updates. And again, weather permitting, we'll see you for the championship game Sunday night. Right now, we're through five innings in Seattle. Washington leads at 2 0. Stay tuned for the press box, followed by Pac 10 baseball. So long, everybody. You're watching the best of the Northwest on Prime Sports. And you're definitely watching the hardiest of the Northwest. Welcome back. We now have one out in the top half of the sixth inning. Rhonda Freeman is just grounded out to open the top of the sixth. Todd Pickett and Peg Reese with you in Seattle. One gone. Washington leads at 2 nothing. Grounder to second base to Pickering to Church. And everybody in a hurry here all of a sudden. Rachel Stone retired on a grounder. Two pitches, two outs in the top half of the sixth inning. We want to let you know now, uh, for those of you who are watching, Due to contractual agreements, we will be forced to leave our game at 7.30 and switch you to the Pac-10 Baseball Championship between Washington and USC. Should this game continue, we will be here to provide you with updates. Wendy McKibben up. We will uh, be able to stay with you until the opening pitch of that game between Washington and USC. So we'll be able to run a few minutes past 7.30, but we will keep you posted as we're in the top of the six, scheduled to go seven, by the way. McKibben fouling that one back, one and one. She struck out in the first, popped back to the pitcher in the fourth inning. And if you're joining us now, Wendy McKibben, the leading hitter for Jacksonville State with a 450 batting average. And the Huskies opening this inning with a couple of routine infield outs. We've got two down in a hurry. Downstairs from Eve Gaw, 2-1 the count. I'll be pretty interested in seeing how these pitchers are doing. You know, we initially said the first break probably shouldn't hurt. It's just like going from the first game to the second game, uh, a break and a doubleheader. But uh, it's been off and on and off and down. And it, sooner or later, it's got to get to you. Gaw catches the outside corner, and it's two and two. I think what I'm going to be interested in is seeing how quick Washington goes through the bottom of the sixth and progresses to the seventh to try to get this game in, get home, and ready for Saturday. Of course, you can't rush things either. But the 2-2 two -two pitch popped up. Storseth right out in perhaps the wettest part of the field, called off by the left fielder, and Williams makes the catch to end the inning. For Jacksonville State in the top half of the seventh, uh, sixth inning, 
No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Washington leads it 2-0. Times, whatever. Get out of there. Did the band go to the baseball game? <laughs> In LA? Yeah. yeah. We're tougher than the band. They're a bunch of wussies. <laughs> na, 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 na. Front runners. Klein is due. No, nobody's due, Egg. Klein. Bottom half of the sixth inning, four, five, six hitters scheduled for Washington. The catcher, Jennifer Klein, first baseman, Michelle Church, and right fielder, Becky Newbury, as you see Lake Washington and beyond. Out the left field corner here at the Husky Softball Stadium. Bottom half of the sixth inning of play in Seattle. Winner of this contest will face Oklahoma State tomorrow. The loser meets Indiana, and the loser of that contest would be eliminated from this regional tournament. Called strike to Klein. Todd, here's a nice little honor that Jennifer Klein picked up uh, earlier in the year back in March. A player of the week for the NC2A. Actually, one of three Huskies to get that honor. As you mentioned earlier, a number of players, in fact, 10 in total being named to a first, second, or honorable mention conference awards. Fly towards left center field. And a nice catch there in the conditions by Rachel Stone, who of course had the tough error in the first inning, but made that catch in deep left center field to retire Jennifer Klein. That by far the hardest hit ball we've had in the game. And of course, in the first break, uh, the grounds crew here spent so much time making sure that that uh, warning track area was dry. And you can see that it's slick out there now. Nicely played by Rachel Stone. Outside to Michelle Church. Stone, by the way, talking about awards, is one of four Jacksonville State players who were named to the academic all-district team and will be up for academic All-America consideration. Shelton, McKibben, and Moore, the other three. One and one, the count now to Church. Here's Two Huskies tied for third on that spot. A couple of hitters you're familiar with, Peg, ahead of them. A couple of Arizona gals, Espinoza and Dalton. Of course, uh, Espinoza graduating a year ago and Dalton on her heels, but she could be tough to, tough to catch. One, two pitch. Just got a piece of that. Well, that last graphic gives you an idea of how uh, strong the Pac-10 is when you've got the those top four spots belonging to Pac-10 players. Two and two, the count. Defense playing Church pretty well straight away. The uh, center fielder Freeman in a little shallow, as you can see. And the 2-2 pitch from Shelton, the change misses. Or a change and a half, I think. <laughs> it was, uh, she really took some speed off that ball, but it ballooned a little high, and and uh, Church just didn't bite on it. That was the slow. Church might have had time to recheck and swing again, and she fans. So Shelton's speed change pays off for her. And Shelton right picks up the, her second strike out of the game. So she's at 332. And a good look there as Church taking a healthy swing. But again, this is someone who averages about a strikeout and a half per inning. So she has not uh, kept pace today against the number one team in the country. Becky Newbury 0 for 1. Fouled out the first base in the second inning. Walked in the fourth. 
And one of the few notes that I can still read after our bouts of rain. <laughs> well, and to Shelton's credit, she's not only battling the uh, number one team in the country, she's battling Mother Nature here today, too, who has not made it easy. Pop foul. McKibben giving chase. So Newbury will be in the hole now, 0-2. Newbury garnering uh, all Pac-10 uh, second team conference honors as a freshman. That sure bodes well for the future of this young player. Makes coaches happy too. Jack State trying to rally the troops. Drifting back and now giving way the left fielder making the scooping catch. The stone has fielded her position well since the first inning. Washington retired in order in the sixth. We will go to the top half of the seventh inning. Jacksonville State with three more outs if they want to stay on the winner's side of this regional draw. Washington leads it two to nothing. You're watching the best of the Northwest on Prime Sports. top half of the seventh inning. The appeal has gone out for volunteers for the grounds crew for tomorrow morning to help get the field in shape. Washington hoping to close things out as the skies begin to darken a little bit once again. Eve Goff, three outs away from picking up a shutout victory. To short and Shelton grounding it to Storseth and there's one down. And uh, Eve Gaw, even when uh, she's allowing Jackson State to get the bat on the ball of late, they've been putting it on the ground, and it's been uh, pretty easy going for her infielders. That time, Tammy Storseth getting a nod and firing it over to Church for the out. Stephanie Vickers, the batter, popped to third base in the second inning, struck out in the fourth. Well, Eve's still coming with some heat there. You know, we've been off and on. It's been uh, a long time since we started this ball game and uh, about three and a half hours, and she's just really bringing the ball. She's been real comfortable against the bottom part of this order the entire game. We watch her over Power Vickers again. That's such a smart pitch. Not, not good enough uh, if it's let go to be a strike. Eight strikeout for Eve Gaw. Make it nine, excuse me. And she's really just a one squib hit off the glove of Heather Tarr away from having a no-hitter in the opening round of the regionals. And all three uh, Washington pitchers have uh, been a part of no-hitters this year. Uh, Gaw pitching, I believe, uh, five innings of one before being relieved by Heather Meyer. Annie Simpson grounds also. back to Gaw. This will end the game as Washington comes up with the victory. Final line totals in this opening game for Washington. Two runs on two hits and an error. Jacksonville State, no runs on one hit and two errors. Stay tuned for Pac-10 Baseball, Washington and USC next. And join us on Sunday for the championship game of this regional. It is scheduled again for 8 o'clock on Prime Sports, 8 o'clock Pacific time. The championship game of this double elimination tournament with a bid in the College World Series in Columbus, Georgia on the line. Peg, a few quick seconds for a final thought. Well, I'm sure this is not uh, the game anybody expected, mostly because of the weather, but the Huskies get a win, they'll be happy. Stay tuned, Pac-10 Baseball from Los Angeles comes up next for Peg Reese and our crew in Seattle. I'm Todd Pickett, we'll see you on Sunday. So long, everybody.